it's easy to forgive Becca. And I know Becca didn't intend to hurt me. And I didn't intend to hurt her. And yet there are times that because of who we are, we are hurt. And yet it's not the end of a relationship. There's so much more. And I want the more. I am so proud of the woman that Becca has become. Becca is so much more than just a playwright or a dog musher. Becca's a writer. She has blossomed as an artist. She's a wonderful person who so many people in this town or in this world are thankful to know. There's a very pleasant nothingness to driving dogs. Absolute silence. Just their paws hitting the ground and their like heads bent into the wind, the wind cutting against them. That is all you hear. And there's nothing to think about. There's nothing to negotiate. It just is. One thing about this play is that every character has their own personal breakdown. And my character. A mother's heart is never far from her children. I am Becca's mother. Yeah, I got sent to like a halfway house in Minneapolis when I was 18. Like as soon as I was 18 and like able to be on my own, my parents were like, you are out. Like if I was like trapped in Wisconsin, like under that regime and they're like, no, you're gonna stay with us. We're gonna work it out. Like I couldn't have become like an explorer, an adventurer. My mom is kind of the rock of the family. She was the one that kind of got my dad out of his Mennonite Amish, let's move into an underground bunker stage of his life. It was really my mom that helped him see the light and reality again. So she's always been kind of this really level-headed presence in our family. At that time, my mom was coming out of an extremely rigid conservative ideology that forced her to look at the world through a black or white lens. She wasn't afraid of experimenting, you know, with alcohol, with drugs. And it could only mean that she was headed down the road of depravity, even though I was still running cross country and doing well in school. It was not enough. There was a police officer um, who was in the school. And I remember him um, telling my husband that, you know, she was just really running with the wrong crowd of people. And that he, would, he felt like it would really be helpful to, you know, re get her out of Wausau so that, you know, he said, once you're in that group, it's really hard to get out. My parents made arrangements for me to go to this halfway house without me knowing. They packed up a bunch of my stuff and I found it packed up in a closet like a couple days before my 18th birthday. And I knew I was gonna be leaving soon. Kind of packed up my stuff put in the car and sent.
we felt like we had to do something. And I don't know if it was right or wrong or uh, she survived it. She's a survivor. It's not easy to be ejected from the family home. It's tough. But at the same time, like, I could never have become who I am without it. When you write, you get this second chance to rewrite the narrative and to be able to respond in the way that you wish you could have in the moment. I think when trauma happens to you, you are a character in a story. I write to liberate my story and share it with others. Because I think we're all at some basic level deeply connected and we miss out on each other if we don't share our stories. She was a writer uh, before she really knew all the words to put together in a sentence. She filled pages, she covered walls, she wrote on everything like in, in our family basement. As far as a playwright, I think this is the first play. To start with wagons of shared artistic goals, to dwell in the fusion of love. I'm not trying to be a thorn in your side, but I think you're definitely sitting on the book that's gonna change your life. What do I think Becca's writing does for her? It really centers Becca. I think it gives her an outlet. I think it's a lot like a sled dog. They need to be run. Like they, they need to go out there and exercise what they've been given. The writing is it just an expression of, of where she's at in life. I think the teenage years were like climbing a mountaintop towards the self that you would one day become. But before you get that view on top, you have to go over the sticks and the rocks and the crevasses. I think I was climbing this mountain to try to see who I was and I wasn't able to really be open and honest with you guys. You guys were coming out of this like religious past where everything was black and white and there wasn't room for that like gray area that my soul was becoming. Hold on, I need to like <laughs> cool off for a second. <laughs> Goodness. All right, lay it on me. I am really sorry that I wasn't able to stay vulnerable and that I wasn't able to reach in and, you know, really see your heart and be there for you. Will you forgive me? I forgive you. Person to person, I love you and I really appreciate that you're here in like such a like humble and apologetic and seeking connection kind of way. It really feels amazing that that's where we are today. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love you so much. I have grown in my relationship with you more than probably any relationship in my life because of that pushback from you and not giving up on who you are and the dreams that you've been given. Walls in me have been broken down and I've seen how I've 
judged you and and you are you know just the most beautiful woman you are so gifted and i'm so incredibly blessed to be your mother and so thankful that you love me as much as you do when you think about your life ahead what kind of dreams do you have in your heart I love that question. With my writing, I hope that I'm still writing for an audience of my friends because that's the only reason that I'm picking up the pen is to share stories with the ones that I love. The other thing I look forward to is a future with dogs. I would love to have my own private kennel <laughs> with like 15 dogs and just be friends with them. Those are beautiful dreams. <laughs>